Why would you need tools like TypeScript for building applications? Well, take a look at this JavaScript code. I have this cost variable, and then here I'm doing cost.push. And the push method only exists on arrays. But this code we have here is sort of fine in JavaScript. Now, let's say you push this code to production. You try to run your application. Now you get this error on cut type error. Cost.push is not a function. The same thing happens if we should run this JavaScript code in a Node.js environment. See, we have an error again. Type error cost.push is not a function. When building applications, you definitely don't want such type errors going to production. You want to be able to catch this kind of errors in development so that when your code gets to production, you have a bit of guarantee that things won't break. Let me show you another example. I have this function called total. It adds all the items in that array to return the total. But then here we say total one, two, three. We didn't put this in an array. This also kind of looks fine in JavaScript, but then you only realize it's not fine when your code gets to production and it is run. We have another error. Numbers array dot reduce is not a function. And that's because numbers array here is going to receive one and one is a number and a number doesn't have the reduce method. Here I have this object, but then I'm trying to evoke the print name property like as if it was a method. This is also going to throw a type error because print name is a string and not a method. You don't want errors like this in production. And now you're probably thinking, why would I ever do this? I can be very careful not to make this kind of mistake. Well, firstly, you're not perfect. When you work on projects where modules and functions and variables are used in several parts of your application, especially when it's a big application, you may never know when you create a bug like this that can only be discovered when the code is actually running. Also, when you're working on projects that involves multiple people working simultaneously, it becomes very important not to give room for this type of errors. So how do you ensure that a code like this doesn't get to production? Or how do you ensure you get immediate feedback in development of what you might be doing wrong? And there are several tools tools and solutions for this. One approach could be writing tests all around your applications. That could also help you find errors like this. But one of the most popular solutions used for writing type safe applications so you avoid type errors like this is TypeScript. Just to show you a bit of what TypeScript looks like. So here I have the TypeScript version of the JavaScript code we had previously. I have this cost variable, which I've said should have a string type. Now, when I call this push method, you see TypeScript throws an error. Property push does not exist on type string. But then if I should change this to maybe an array, of numbers. Don't worry if you don't understand the syntax. You can see everything works fine because this is an array of numbers. And so TypeScript knows that an array has a push method. Well, what is TypeScript? TypeScript is a superset of JavaScript which provides static type checking. Think of it as JavaScript with powers. It was created by Microsoft and the goal was to help catch type related bugs that can easily creep into production. So with the TypeScript tool, you have the TypeScript code and this code will compile your TypeScript code to JavaScript code. And of course, in the process, if there are any type errors, it will throw an error. But if there are no type errors, it converts it to JavaScript because JavaScript is what the browser understands as well as other runtime environments like Node. Now, though TypeScript adds a bit more work to the regular JavaScript code that you write, it plays an important role in helping you build type safe applications. JavaScript is regarded as a loose language, a dynamically typed language. Such languages assign types during runtime. What that means is, say you have this example, here variable is a string, here variable is an array. Now, as at the time where this line is run during runtime, well, variable is going to be of type string. Now, at the point where you assign an array to this variable, now variable is going to be of type array. This is what makes it dynamic. Depending on the values that you assign to the variable, the variable can hold different types from time to time. Now in small applications, this is fine. You don't have to worry about your types. JavaScript will figure them out during runtime. But as your application grows bigger and bigger, you probably don't want things to be dynamic like this. Instead, you want them to be static. Because if you're only having access to type information during runtime, well, that means there are some type bugs that you would only discover 
cover during runtime. Let's say you come here and you do variable dot to fixed two. Now to fix is something that exists on numbers, but not strings and not arrays. You probably wouldn't discover that this is an error until you try to run the JavaScript. So if I should run this with node, what is TypeScript slash index.js? Oh, now we get an error which says variable to fixed is not a function. But if let's say we had here that variable equals 20, well, that means variable is now going to be of the number type. And that way, if we should run this node again, you can see that we don't have any errors here. So with dynamic typings like this, some type errors can creep into production if you're not careful enough. But then when you add static typing to your code, that means you don't have to get type information during runtime anymore. You can get it directly from compile time. And this is where TypeScript comes in. By having static typing, you can ensure your code is in the right structure, having the right types before your code gets to production. In the rest of this video, we'll learn how to set up TypeScript, see the syntax of TypeScript and the various ways that you can and type your variables and would learn many other important things that will be useful for you in your TypeScript journey. Setting up TypeScript for your project. Now, if you're using frameworks like React, Vue, or Angular, they might have a different setup than what I'm about to show you. In fact, some of these frameworks already have TypeScript set up for you so you don't have to do anything yourself. But in this video, I'm just going to show you how to set up TypeScript in a simple JavaScript project. And the first requirement for this is that you need to have Node.js installed on your device and by installing node.js you also have npm which we're going to be using to install packages or you can use other package managers like yan or pnpm whatever works for you in this video i'm just going to be using npm i have this project called typescript course and i have a couple of files in this project i can check if node is installed by saying node v i can check if npm is installed by saying npm v which will return the versions and now i can run npm in its Yes, which is kind of preparing my project. And when I run this, this is going to create a package.json file, which looks like this. So here I'm going to install TypeScript and I'll install it as a dev dependency. From the docs here, you can see TypeScript is a language for application skill, JavaScript, and a lot more you can read on it if you're interested. So when I install this in my package.json, I'm going to have TypeScript here. Another package we're going to install is TS Node. TS Node allows TypeScript execution for Node.js. So coming back here, if I open this JavaScript file here, I can run this JavaScript file by saying node what is TypeScript slash index.js. This works fine. But then if I have a file called index.ts, and let me just put some TypeScript stuff here. Don't worry if it doesn't make sense. If I should run this again with node slash index.ts, now I'm going to get an error because Node.js doesn't understand TypeScript. So for me to be able to run my TypeScript in a Node.js environment, then I'm going to use TS Node. I'm going to install this globally so that I can use TS Node from anywhere that I want. And then now that I have this installed, I can now say TS Node and then I I have what is TypeScript slash index.ts and you can see that's fine. This way I can run TypeScript in a Node.js environment and we're going to be using TS node a couple of times in this video. Another thing I'm going to do is to initialize my TypeScript configuration and I'm going to do that using mpx tsc init. tsc is a compiler that is found in the TypeScript package and I'm using npx so that npx can find tsc in my node modules and when I run this, this is going to initialize a tsconfig.json file which if I should check here, you can see I have tsconfig and this tsconfig has a bunch of options and I'm going to explain a few of these options later on in this video. So don't worry about it for now. Now that I have all of this installed and configured, I can begin using TypeScript and writing my TypeScript code in files that have the ts extension. So what is the syntax for writing TypeScript code? Well, the idea of TypeScript is that you tell TypeScript what type a variable should hold. And you do that with a colon followed by the type. So here we can say let course and then we have colon and the type for course is going to be string. And then here we can have TypeScript. And this is called type annotation. We are annotating this variable 
with the string type. So here we can say cos equals to Python and this is fine because this is also a string. It matches the static type of provided here. But then if we should say cos equals 50, which is a number and let's try to run this TypeScript code. So I'm going to use TS node. So TS node and the path for this is TypeScript slash syntax index.ts where we're going to get an error. And in this error here, TypeScript is saying unable to compile TypeScript. And why is that the case? Well, because type number is not assignable to type string. So because we have declared a static type of string, that means cos can only hold string values. And then while compiling this TypeScript code, TypeScript sees that here we are attempting to assign a number, but then here we said string. But then if I should remove the cost 50 and then let's just say I do console log cost here. If I should run this again, TS node, well, now we have the course, which is Python. There are different types you can use in TypeScript from basic to advanced. Later on, we're going to look at some advanced types, but let's start from some basic types. So like we already saw, you can have a string type, you can have a number type, you can have a Boolean type. So here we have Boolean. You can have a null type. I can also have an undefined type. So I'm going to have undefined. You can also have an array type where you just use open and close square brackets or instead of just having the array like this, you can specify what kind of types can be in this array. So if you should say string, then like this, this means an array of strings. And so in here we can have string one, string two. We can also come here and push string three. We can also come here and have array two. And instead we have number array. So here we can have one, two, three, and then we can also come here to do array dot push four, five, six. But then if we should say array two dot push, and let's say we push a string, if I should run this with TS node, the path for this is basic types slash index dot TS. We're going to have an error. The error says that argument of type string is not assignable to parameter of type number. We are trying to push a string here. So because we have declared our type here to be no number attempting to push a string is going to result in an error. Another way to declare an array is by using the array generic type. So we can say array three and then we have the array generic type and then we pass maybe an array of numbers or an array of strings. Now, don't worry if you don't know what generic types are. We're going to look at that later on in this video. Another way you can type your variables is with tuples. So I can have a tuple here and here I can have an array where I can say the first value in the array is a string and the second value in the array is a number which means tuple has to be string number if i try to add another value to this array i'm going to get an error and we can try that so if i run this we have an error type string number number is not assignable to type string number so this is string number number but our type says string number so with tuples you can specify the length of your array along with the types for each element if we should also come here and try to do tuple and we try to get something at the index of two, we're also going to get an error because this tuple only has index for zero and index for one. You can also have object type. So for example, we can say let info and then we're going to type this by saying the name should be string, the age should be string and is logged in should be Boolean. And now in this info, I can specify a name I can specify an age and I can specify is logged in to be a Boolean. Now, if I should make is logged in a string instead, if I come here again and run TS node, we're going to have an error. And this error says that type string is not assignable to type Boolean. We are passing a string to is logged in, but is logged in is supposed to be a Boolean, but this is going to work fine. And if I pass another property that is not expected in our type, then we're also going to get an error. So this is an object type and you would see this used a lot. So for example, you can have a user object, a team object, an info object, various kind of object and also various kind of types as we'll be seeing in the rest of this video. You can also type function parameters and function return values. For example, we can have a function called print here and we just have a message and we can type this to be string. And then here I'm just going to have console.log message. So here I can say print I am 
awesome and then here in my terminal i can run cs node then the path for this is function types slash index.cs and it prints i am awesome but then if i should pass a number and i run cs node again or well, now i have an error and typescript is saying that argument of type number is not assignable to parameter of type string like i said you can also type return values so here i can say function total and total takes numbers as a parameter and i can type this to be an array of numbers and then i can also have colon and type here again which means this function should return a number then here i can say return numbers dot reduce and i'm just going to add everything together so here i can pass total and i can pass an array of one two and three and all of that works fine but then let's say i put a string here in this array if i run this again we're going to get an error and the error says type string is not assignable to type number and this is the string that doesn't match the number but then i can also leave this as a number and then let's say in this function i instead return a string remember i'm supposed to return a number if i run this again cs node what we get is type string is not assignable to type number we are returning a string here but then we have typed this function to say return number but then if I'm returning a number in this line and I am passing the right type for the argument, let's just say I do console.log value here. If I come here, I can run CS node again and now we have six and you can pass multiple parameters so this is one parameter you can pass another parameter message this is going to be a string i can also put message as optional so that means you can choose to provide a message or not when you are using the total function we've seen how to type function parameters and function return types but how can you type let's say callback functions or object methods well let's see how callback functions work so let's say you have a function called callback and this takes a callback function and basically you do something here and then you call the callback function how can you type this callback function well you can do that following this syntax you have your parentheses and you can have your parameters which are also typed and they can type the return type by saying string number or whatever so for example for this cb we can type it by saying it shouldn't have any arguments and it should return void void is just like the function doesn't return anything so here let's just create a random function and then here we can say callback and then we can pass random random doesn't take any argument and it also doesn't return anything which matches the type that we have here but then let's say random actually takes an argument let's just say random takes a name of string come here now and say we want a name of string as the argument and then it should return void and then here i'm just going to pass a string i'll call this decode which is going to be received as the name here and here i can just print the name oh sorry this should not be print this should be console log this is because i've been writing a lot of python recently now if i should run this you can see that it works fine we have decode because we typed our callback function to be this and this callback function matches the same because this function isn't returning anything it's going to have void here but we can also come here and type the return as void and we can also apply the same concept to object methods say we have an object here and then here we can have a function called add and this add is going to be a method where we receive norm one as number and norm two as number and then we return norm one plus norm two so how do we type an object like this well here when we're typing the object we can say this object is going to be name string and then add is going to be again function like this where we have num1 equals number and num2 equals number and then we can return a number here so that means i don't even have to type these parameters anymore because i have already typed it from here and now we can say console.log obj add and for this add we can add 20 and 
50. If I should run this 20 plus 50, it gives us 70. But then let's say for num2, instead of passing 50, I pass a string. Now, if I should run this again, we're going to have an error. And the error says that argument of type string is not assignable to parameter of type number. We are passing a string, but we have already typed our method to receive a second argument of number. So far, I've been running TS node to see if there are any type errors in my code. For example, with this function example I have here, I'd have to run TS node typing functions index.ts before I realize that there is an error here. Now, it would be a painful experience where if I write any code, I have to run TS node to know if everything is fine. But I don't have to do that. And thanks to my editor, VS Code, I can get immediate feedback when I'm having some type errors. I even had to turn off this feedback just for the case of this video. So down here, I had to turn off some TypeScript and JavaScript feedback. But now if I should comment that out, you can see that right here in my VS Code, I am already getting some feedback. Argument of type string is not assignable to parameter of type number. Also, if we should go to this place where I have basic types, here I say age should be a string, but I'm instead passing a number here. But then if I change this back to a number, everything is fine. Well, not everything. I have this other place that says another property, something. But then in my type here, I don't have another property, but I can take it out. And now this code is fine. Coming back here, we haven't removed this error yet. So if I have this as 50, now that is fine. With this, I don't have to run TS node. I get feedback directly in my editor and I can fix those errors. And I will only need TS node when I want to compile this from TypeScript to Java script. Now, if you're using VS Code, you most likely also already have the TypeScript support in it. But if you're using any other editor, you probably don't. So I'd recommend going online and checking for your editor if it has TypeScript or how to set up TypeScript in your editor. But VS Code, you have to do little or no settings because TypeScript is already inbuilt in VS Code. Sometimes you have to explicitly declare your types. And this is type annotation as we have seen. So we have let course and then we have string like this. But in some some other cases, you don't have to explicitly declare your types like this because TypeScript can infer your types. This is an implicit approach to static typing. So here, when we have let cost equals to string, as you can see, TypeScript has inferred that the cost variable has the string type. If I should make this 500, you can see the cost variable is a number. So now let's take this back where we have string. Now, if I come here and I say cost equals to 50, now we have a TypeScript error and TypeScript is saying, type number is not assignable to type string. TypeScript inferred this to be a string type and so we cannot assign a number. Same thing if we should come here and say let cost equals 500. Now this line is fine but then if we should make this a string we have an error type string is not assignable to type number. You can also do the same thing for arrays. I could explicitly type this to say an array of numbers but even if I don't do that TypeScript is going to infer that values has an array of numbers. If I should change everything here to a string, TypeScript is going to infer that this is an array of strings. But let me take this back to a number. Now, if I come here and I say values.push500, everything works fine because 500 is also a number. But if I should say values.push string, now we have an error. Argument of type string is not assignable to parameter of type number. Let's say I have info and I type it like this. And now I'm going to have an object where I can say name, age, and is logged in. I'm just going to say false. Sorry, this should be equal to. You can see everything is fine here. We have our explicit type. But if I should also remove this explicit type and just do it like this, TypeScript is going to infer that this info object holds this type, which is name string, age number, is logged in boolean. And the same thing happens with functions. Let's say I have a function function called print info and this function takes a name of a string and it takes an age of a number and then here I can return my name is name and I am age years old. If I highlight on this print info, you can see that the return type here is a string. This is inferred from the fact that I am returning a string here. If instead of returning a string, I return a number. Let's just say I return age. You can see that TypeScript is going to infer that print info has a return type of 
number but in this case if you just have name like this and age like this without explicitly typing well typescript doesn't know what type to give for your name and what type to give for your age so in the case of function parameters you have to explicitly type it this is one of the things that improves the experience with typescript you don't always have to explicitly declare your types typescript can help you in far types in different cases but then there are other cases where you have to explicitly do so so far we're getting to see the benefit of using TypeScript, right? So you have all of this TypeScript code and now you want to run this code in your browser. I have this index.html where I reference the code here. Well, in your browser, you're going to get an error. Here it says refuse to execute script from this for blah, blah, blah. Well, basically the browser doesn't understand TypeScript code. It only understands JavaScript code. So TypeScript is a tool that you use during development. But when you want to deploy your application to production, you're not going to have TypeScript code anymore. Instead, you're going to have the JavaScript version of your TypeScript code. And TypeScript provides a compiler that allows you to easily convert your TypeScript code to JavaScript code. So here I can say npx tsc and then I can compile this file which is to production slash index dot ts. This is the part coming from here and now if I run this well we have an error during compilation. There is a type error where we are assigning an object to a parameter of string or number and that is coming from here because here we say this array can only contain string or numbers and then we are pushing this so that's wrong let's run this again tsc okay now our javascript version is created if i come here you can see we have the index.ts and then here we have the javascript version so here in this javascript version you can see that we basically have what we had before but without the types and now in this index.html instead of referencing this ts i can reference this js and if i should refresh this you can see we don't have any errors in our console anymore so let's just say in this index.ts i do console.log array then i compile that to javascript which is going to be here in this javascript you can see we have our console log array and we reference this javascript here now if i go back here and refresh you can see our array where we have our string and we have our numbers so if you remember earlier i said tools like typescript helps you to avoid pushing type related errors to production and this is how it works because while you are compiling to javascript you can catch the type errors and resolve them and then you know that with your javascript code you have more guarantee that you won't have a lot of type related errors now like i said before if you are using frameworks you most likely don't have to set up typescript for yourself you most likely don't have to come here to run this compilation yourself the framework is going to take care of it for you for example when I write TypeScript in React, I don't have to run this compilation. During the React build process, the TypeScript will be converted to JavaScript. Same with other frameworks that you might be using. I'm just showing you this because we're using a basic JavaScript example that doesn't have any build process involved. So far, we have seen that you can type your variables like this. But instead of typing it like this, you can also have something called a type alias. A type alias is created with a type keyword, so I can call this str and then I can just use string for now and then instead of having string directly here I can use this alias you can think of type alias like variables this is a variable that holds this type and now I can use this variable here you can choose to have it as small s in the str that is also fine but the common convention with type aliases is to have the first character in uppercase and now when you have a type alias like this you can use it in multiple places for example in this second line I can have cos2 which is also str and then I have this and now if I don't want these courses to be strings anymore I can easily come here change this to number and now in these two places I have to use that number so here if I say 50 50, we don't have any errors on that line if I say 100 we don't have any errors on this line now in the case of strings or numbers or booleans type aliases may not really be beneficial but they become very beneficial especially when you want to have an object type for example I have this user object type and now I can use this for the first user I'll call this user 
user one i'll type this to user and our typescript is going to help me with the properties i need for this object so i need a name i need an age i need some hobbies you can see i'm still not done what it says here is property address is missing so i still need to provide all of that country house number i would say 1000 you can see the address property is still not done because street name is missing when i provide a street name you can see all of this is now fine and i can also use this for another user i call this user 2 which has different fields here and now if i want my user object to look different i can easily come to this type alias let's say we want to add a new field we'll call this native language and this should also be a string now you can see that in user 1 i need to provide native language and in user 2 i also need to provide native language so with type aliases you can have the same type used in multiple places and if you need to change that type you can change it in one place instead of changing it in multiple places now i can also come here and say native language should be optional and now user one doesn't have that error anymore user two also doesn't have that error anymore sometimes you want to do a this or that type or a this or that or that or that type typescript allows you to do this using union types and this involves the pipe symbol so here we can say item and then we can say string which we're used to and with the pipe symbol we can also say number which means item can either hold a string or number data type so here if we say item equals a string that's fine if we say item equals a number that's fine if we say item equals false now we get an error and typescript is saying type boolean is not assignable to type string or number but then if i come here and i put the pipe symbol and i also say boolean you can see that's fine again but then if i assign another type of value that typescript doesn't expect we have another error one case where union types can be very useful is let's say you want an array to be able to contain string or number types you can say const array and then here we have string or number. I'm going to put this in a bracket and then I can have square bracket open and close. And here I have my array. So if I push a string, it's fine. If I push a number, it's fine. But when I try to push a Boolean, we have an error again because boolean is not assignable to parameter string or number another case where union types can be useful is for function return types let's say we have our user type here we can now have a function which we'll call get user and this function takes an id which is a string and then we can say that this function either returns the user type or null so here in this function i would get user from database from wherever and i can return this user object here which matches the user type or instead of returning this let's say i don't find the user i can also return null which again is fine there are no errors but then if i try to return something else like a string i have an error it says type string is not assignable to type user if i should return an array we get again an error because we have specified a union type of user or null for our function we can only return a user object or null and here we have an error because our function is not returning anything in typescript you also have a concept called discriminating unions discriminating unions is a concept in typescript where you have a union of objects which share one or multiple identical properties let's see an example here we have a user object and then here we have a type alias called res in this type alias we have a union of three objects the first one has a status property with the success literal type and the data user second one has status error error message string third one has status pending expiry date dates what you notice in these three objects is that they all share the status property but aside this other properties are different now let's say i have a variable called response and i use my type alias here now when i want to create an object i can pass status because all of these objects have status so here in this status i can say success but then if i should try to pass error message you can see we have an error here because we have said status success, TypeScript knows that we are referring to this object. And on this object, there is no error message. But then if I should say data, 
you can see that everything works fine. But then when I change this now to error, we have a problem. When you say error, TypeScript knows you are referring to this object. And so we need error message, not data. So now I can come here and say error message and then pass a message here. Everything is fine. When I use pending, we have an error again. With pending, TypeScript knows that we are referring to this. And so we're supposed to pass an expiry date. So you can see in this case of discriminating union where we have a couple of unions, TypeScript can know what union we are referring to when we specify the unique property. We have seen union types, which is a this or that type. Well, TypeScript also has intersection types, which is a this and that type. And for this, you use the ampersand symbol. So let's say we have a user type and then we have the address type. Then we can have a type alias. Let's call this user info. And then we can say user and address. So here we're combining this type and this type. First, let me remove the address. So let's say I have a user variable, which I'm going to type to user info. I have to provide my username. Then I have to provide my ID. Then I have to provide my email. Everything is fine. Now, when I intersect the address with the user, now I need to provide more properties. You can see type username string, ID string, email string is not assignable to type user info. Type username string, ID string, email string is missing the following properties from type address, country, city, street name, and house number. So now I can come here, city, country, house number, street name, random, street. So intersection types is very useful where in a case like this, we want to have the user type separate and the address type separate. You know, we could also just take everything from here and put it in the user type. But depending on the application you're building, that's probably not what you want. You want to have these things separate so that you can type specific things to address and specific things to user. But then there might also be other cases where you want to type both of them together as like a general user information in that case you can intersect both types like this and if you want to add one more type that's also fine you can also say and native language string you can have it like this or you can also have it as a type alias if you want and now i can come to this user put native language and let's just say French and all of that works. So you can intersect as many types as you want. And this allows you to have your types still separate for other use cases. TypeScript also has something called literal types. You've probably heard me say this a few times already, but let me explain what they are. Like, you know, we can have a type like string and here we can have TypeScript. We can have Python, we can have CSS, we can have different forms of strings, but you can also specify a literal string as a type. What that means is instead of saying let cos is string, you can instead say let cos is TypeScript. This is a literal string type and the literal is coming from the fact that this is literal. So now when we pass CSS, this doesn't work. When we pass Python, even if Python is a string, it also doesn't work. We still have this error, which says type Python is not assignable to type TypeScript. But now when we change this to TypeScript, you can see everything works fine. And this also works for numbers. We can say let spacing. If we say this should be a number, well, spacing can be 50, can be 10, can be five, can be any number. But once we say 40, then we have a literal number type an error here type 5 is not assignable to type 40 but when we make this 40 everything is fine now you're probably thinking why would you want to have literal types well literal types can be very useful when you want to narrow the acceptable types for a variable what i mean by this is here like we saw if you have cost to be string it means you can have different forms of strings but then it's also possible you don't want just any string but you want to have like few strings then we can use unions with literal types so here we can say typescript or Python or CSS. And now if we should say course is equals to Python, everything is fine. If I said course is equals to CSS, we get suggestions again. That's nice. But then when you say course equals to Java, okay, now you have an error because Java is not assignable to type TypeScript, Python, and CSS. Let me show you another example where this is nice. Let's say we have our user type again, and we have this user. Let's say you want to assess a specific key in this object. Now we're just going to call this a string. I'm just going to pass a key called not exists. 
and then I'll try to get the value for that key. Now, because we don't have a not exist key here, this is going to be on the find. But then you can also say that instead of just accepting any string as the key, you only want to accept the keys that are here. So what you can do is we can have a type alias, we'll call this key, and then this is going to be a union of literal types. So it's going to be name, age, hobbies, address. And then instead of saying the key should be a string, we can say that the key should be key. So when we use not exist, you can see we have an error. Not exist is not assignable to type key. But then when we pass name here, everything is fine. Age, everything is fine. Hobbies, everything is fine. Address, everything is fine. Addresses, we have an error here again. There is one type that I haven't mentioned yet in this video. And let's call this a special type. This is the any type. Now I'm working with type TypeScript, you have to provide accurate types to get the best out of TypeScript. But sometimes you may not know the accurate type to provide, or maybe you are just so stressed, you want to just jump straight into building your application without having to worry about creating the structure of your type. Well, in such cases, TypeScript has the any type. And before I explain what the any type is, I want to first say that using the any type is basically you turning off TypeScript, which means you wouldn't be getting the benefits of TypeScript anymore. Anyways, how does this type work. So here we can have variable any and basically any is a placeholder for any type. So we can say variable is a string, fine is a number, who is an array of numbers, who is an object with a name property of decode is a boolean. When you use this type, you're basically turning off TypeScript because TypeScript is not going to say, oh, this is a string. It cannot do this. This is a number. It cannot do this. You have told TypeScript, this can be anything. So TypeScript feels like if this can be anything, then anything is possible. So going back to our example from earlier, here we have this this cost variable and we have any you can see here again we are doing cost.push and TypeScript isn't saying anything because we're telling TypeScript this can be anything so TypeScript will feel well if this can be anything then it can also be an array and arrays have the push method even if I should compile this from TypeScript to JavaScript you see TypeScript is not going to say anything so npx tsc any type slash index dot ts. You can see we don't have any compile error. And this is the JavaScript version that TypeScript compiled to. And now if we should run this any type index.js, well now we get an error. Cost.push is not a function. So if this code should be compiled and make its way to production, you get such errors that we were avoiding in the first place, which is why we are using TypeScript. And this is a problem that can come with any. So when you're using any in TypeScript, it's just like you are using JavaScript without the static typing. Now TypeScript can be seen as a lot of effort when building applications. Like I said, sometimes you just want to jump straight to building your application without worrying about the types. But this extra effort that you put into defining the types for your variables, for your functions, and for all those things, this is actually what helps you build less error-prone applications, especially errors that have to do with types. So we've seen type annotation where we declare types for our variables, but there's also a concept called type assertion in TypeScript. So this is what we have seen so far. We have this cost variable and then we have this type annotation where we say that this variable should be a string. And now TypeScript is going to infer the value that we have here. And TypeScript sees that this is a string. So this can be assigned to this variable. But then if I come here and I say cost equals to 400, TypeScript is going to infer this value. And it sees that the type of this value is a number. And so number cannot be assignable to type string. But then there are times where we want to tell the compiler the type of a value. And this is type assertion. Let me show you an example. Let's say we have this here. We have this lm variable and this is document element by id and then we pass an id now in this case get element by id is going to return html element or null so i can come here to explicitly say html element or null but then if i should use type annotation to say lm is going to be html element like this we're going to have an error this error says that type HTML element or null is not assignable to type HTML element. So we have here HTML element, but this function returns HTML element or null. But what if we are very sure that this ID exists and this is never going to return null? Then in that case, we can assert this value to a different type. And to do that, we would say 
as html element this is a type assertion where we are telling typescript that it should treat the type of this value as this and now this would match this html element here and if i should remove this type annotation you can see that lm is html element but if i should remove this type assertion you're going to see that lm is html element or null one thing you probably realize here with type assertion is that it can be risky because here you are telling the compiler that I don't want you to infer this for me. I want you to treat this as HTML element. So in a way, you are turning off the TypeScript check. So type assertion is something that you should do carefully, else you might run into runtime errors, which is one of the things that we have been avoiding in the first place. Now, if I should come here and I should say as number, TypeScript is going to tell us, nope, that kind of type assertion cannot work. And this is what TypeScript says. Conversion of HTML element null to type number may be a mistake because neither type sufficiently overlaps with the other. So because this returns HTML element or null, that is why TypeScript allows us to do as HTML element. TypeScript would also allow us to do as null, but then when we do something else, then TypeScript is going to say, no, I don't think this is possible. But then if we want to tell TypeScript I don't care, then we can say as any because HTML elements can also be any. So we can say as any and then we can say as number. So now LM is going to be number. You can see how type assertions means we're telling TypeScript, forget whatever you're doing. This is what I want the type of this value to be. But again, this is dangerous because during runtime, if you should say LM.toFixed, which is supposed to only apply for numbers, that is going to throw an error because this is going to return a HTML element and an HTML element does not have the toe fixed method also coming to this example we have above so what if i say let's cause number and then we are assigning this string what is happening here again is that typescript infers the type of this value as a string but then a string cannot be assigned to this number variable well here we can also use type assertion to say as number although this is not going to work again because typescript is going to say conversion of type string to type number may be a mistake because neither type sufficiently overlaps with the other so what we can say here again is as any as number and now we're telling typescript i want you to treat the type of this value as a number instead of inferring it as a string which typescript will do automatically again this is dangerous because we're telling typescript we don't need your help i am sure of what i'm doing but in the case that i am not sure of what i'm doing i might run into runtime errors but let me show you an example where type assertion can be kind of safe so let's say i have this type alias now i can come here to say const user user info now when i use type annotation like this typescript is going to say that type this is missing the following properties name and staff code it means i cannot have an empty object here even if i wanted to come back later to say user.name decode or something this is still going to have an error because i have an empty object here when you do type annotation with objects like this it means you need to provide all of the required properties which means i have to provide the name and i have to provide the staff code i can still come back later on to change the name to something else if i wanted but then what if i actually want this to be an empty object so that later on i can do user.name equals this and user.staff code equals 400 well in that case of using type annotation i would use type assertion so i'm going to say const user equals this but then instead of typescript inferring the type of this to be an empty object i'm going to tell typescript or telling the compiler that i want you to treat this value as user info i can now have my user annotation here like this and you can see that this works fine or i can just take this out and user is still going to be user info and now i can do user.name equals this and user.staff code equals this and if i try to do user dot something else we're going to have an error that something else does not exist on type user info so with type annotation i cannot provide the empty object like this but when i assert this empty object to a different type telling the compiler 
compiler treat this as user info now everything works fine now the reason why i say using type assertion like this is still kind of safe is that if i declare only user.name but i don't declare user.staff code typescript is not going to throw any warnings because we've already told typescript that treat this as user info so that means if i should come here now and i should say user.staff code dot to fixed and let's say we pass 20 if i run this with ts node type assertion slash index.ts we're going to have a runtime error and this error is coming from the fact that cannot read properties of undefined reading to fixed why because user.staff code is undefined because we only declared for the name property we don't have a value for staff code so that property does not exist so this is basically saying undefined dot to fixed 20 happening at runtime we get an error here so this is why i said with type assertion, you are turning off some TypeScript features which can affect you in runtime. So unless you really need to do a type assertion, you should avoid it. You should allow TypeScript figure out the type of the value for you and see if it matches your annotation. Take this back with the type annotation and I remove this. TypeScript is going to force me to provide these values, name and staff code. And now if I run user.staffcode.toFix, this is going to work fine interface in typescript interface is quite similar with type alias in typescript most of the things you can do with interfaces you can do with type aliases but let me show you what interfaces looks like so you have interface and then we can have something like car info there is no question mark you just have it like this in the case of type you would say type car info equals but in the case of interfaces you just have it like this and then like this and then here we can just have name string model string price number so interfaces allows you to construct something like an object but then you cannot do interface key and then you have a union of key one, key two, key three. This isn't going to work because interfaces are constructed like objects. And also, as we saw with intersection types, you can combine multiple types using the ampersand symbol. In the case of interfaces, you can use the extend keyword. So here I can say interface car prototype. Then I would say extends car info. Here I can just pass code number. So now if we want to build an object with the car prototype interface we're going to pass a name a model price and then a code which is a number car prototype basically has all of these properties from car info and this one that we included here when working with typescript i use type aliases a lot more than i use interfaces so you are probably wondering what is the difference between interfaces and type aliases and when should you use which i'm going to cover that in a separate video which i'm going to link in the video description but i just want to show you how they look like type aliases and also how the different things you can do with interfaces you can also do them with type aliases typescript has something called variable types which allows you to reuse types in different ways these are called type generics and they're very useful let's say we have this function called get random then here we get a random value from that array you can think of any logic here for getting random value i'm just using the index of two just for example sake now here we have a fruits variable this is an array of strings then we have the number variable which has an array of numbers now let's say we want to get a random fruit and a random number fruits typescript infers it to be an array of strings we could also come here to explicitly say this but we don't have to typescript will help us figure that out then here numbers is an array of numbers but then when we get a random fruit you can see that the random fruit has an any type and here a random number you see it has the any type but we would expect that random fruit should have the string type since it's going to be getting a random from these strings and random number should have a number type because it's going to be getting a random from these numbers well the reason why this has an any type is because this r parameter by default has an any type you can see that it implicitly has an any type i could also explicitly say it as any or i could even say it as any array which means an array of anything now because this is an array of anything it means that random is going to be any and we return any from this function so how do we sort of tell this function that I am going to pass an array of strings or I am going to pass an array of numbers or an array of objects. And this is how we can use variable types. How do you create variable types? Well, here we have the less than and greater than symbol. And then you can have your variable type. You can call this anything. You can call it type. You can call it 
decode if you like my channel so much you can call it t actually you see a lot of people call things like this t u or v but let's just keep it as type so this variable type is going to be passed to this function and we can now use this type anywhere in the function so we can use this type here so instead of having any we have type which means an array of this type and then we can also say that this function is going to return the type now at the time of declaring this function this function doesn't know what type is going to be now here where we're using this function get random we can now pass the type that we want so here i can pass a type of string and now if i should hover on get random you can see that it says function get random string the r here is typed as array of strings and it returns a string and then here i can also say number and now you can see get random is going to be number an array of numbers returning number so this is how with a variable type a generic type we can pass different types to this function in the different places that we use it this is what makes generic types reusable and now you're going to see that random fruit is a string and random number is a number and because of type inference we can even remove this from here typescript is going to infer that this returns the type because if we're getting a random from this array then random is basically going to be the type and because of typescript inference again we can also come here to remove this and remove this that's because this fruits is an array of strings and this function receives an array of type so if this is an array of string then that is basically string array like this which means string is the type same thing with the numbers since this is an array of numbers then the random function is going to infer that the type is number so random fruits is a string random number is a number so you can see why i said earlier that type inference makes the developer experience with typescript really nice because all we had to do here was just introduce this type and this type here and we didn't have to do any other thing explicitly typescript in fact the rest you can use type generics with functions and you can also use it with interfaces let's say we have this interface called storage item this interface has a key of string and then it has data this data can probably be a string it could be a number in the storage or it could be an object in the storage now instead of having this union of different types we can make this storage item interface useful by again introducing a type generic let's give this t and then for this data we can simply pass t so now if you're using this interface let's say we have item so you can have it as storage item and then you pass string which means this item is going to have a key of string and a data of string or you can say storage item number and now we have an error here because type string is not assignable to type number and then for this data you can have number or you can say storage item and you can have an object with a name of string and then for this data we can pass name of string and everything matches or instead of interfaces you can also have type aliases so we're going to have type storage item and then you have the equal to here and the same thing works fine we have this generic and then you can use the generic here you can even have multiple generics for example you can have let's call this generic data and then we can also have a generic or key we can pass that key here so which means maybe the key can be a string or it can be a number and then here in this storage item this is going to be for the data and then we can have another one for this key which is going to be string so now that works fine if i have number here well now we have an error here because string is not assignable to number but if i pass a number here as the key everything works fine i can make some of the variable types optional for example with this key here if i should do key equals string that means this is an optional generic type which has a string type so if i don't put anything here it means key would have to be a string because this is the default but then if i want it to be something else like a number then i can explicitly provide that as a number and i can change this here to a number now if you remember earlier we used something like array and then we passed number here like this let's say one two three now this is a type generic two where we have this 
array interface and then we can pass the type of items in that array we can actually create something like this too so i can call this type my array which takes a generic i call this t and then here i can just do t array like this and now i can use my array here and i pass number and this works fine if i pass string i'm going to have an error but if i change everything here to strings they can see that also works fine in typescript you're going to see generic types used a lot especially when you want to create advanced types so it's very important to understand this concept and i hope that these examples shows you how type generics work also with the help of type inferences to make your lives easy and i hope that it also shows you how this allows you to create reusable interfaces or reusable functions that you can use in different ways i have a video where i dive deeper into type generics showing more examples i'll link that video in the video description you can also check it out utility types in typescript typescript exposes some utility types in the form of type generics that allows you to do some interesting things and there are a couple of utility types we're going to look at four of them in this video so let's say we have this object type user it has id username email and password and let's say we want to have another type let's say user without password where we're basically going to have all of this except the password now you might probably think copy all of this from here and paste it without the password password but this is repetition what if we added an age of number here or well, that means we need to come here again and add age of number well we don't have to repeat ourselves we can use one of the utility types called pick and here we have pick and again it's in form of type generics and what we're going to do is we're going to pick some types from here so here i can say pick i want to pick from user and what keys do i want to pick well i want to pick id and then you have it in form of a union so id username age and email so now type without password is going to be id string username string age number email string if i remove this age from here i can come here to remove this age so i'm basically picking these three keys and if i want to add more properties here i can come here to select what i want to Pick. what you see again is that we are still repeating ourselves in a way we have id here and then i come here to have id again we have username i come here again to have username if i add more types i need to add it in this union well in some cases what you might need may be pick but in our case where we want the user object without password i can use another utility type called omit with omit i'm basically saying from this user type i do not want the password and now you can see type user without password is id string username string email string if i come here and i add age of number user without password is going to be id string username string age number email string if i say i don't want the email i can pass it again as a union and now user without password is going to include everything except password and email so in our case omit is the best option but in some other cases pick might be the best option another utility type that is very useful is partial so we can say type user optional and then we can say partial and in this partial we're going to pass user basically what this is going to do is that it's going to make every property here optional so if i go to type user optional you can see that id now has that question mark which means this is optional that means id can be string or undefined username can be string or undefined everything here has optional and then we can say user required where we use the required utility type to make everything required well in this case everything is already required but then let's say the age was optional now if i go to user required you will see that the age here is required so everything here is required we can do that easily with the required type without having to build our own object and make everything required like i said there are more utility types and i'll be covering more of them in another video which i'm going to link in the video description but in my case especially i use omit and pick a lot typescript configuration with TS config dot json now when we initialize typescript at the beginning of this video this file was created now this file has a bunch of properties that you can set and basically all of this is telling typescript how it should work in your project i'm not going to be diving into all these configurations in this video i'm going to be doing that in a separate video but the typescript documentation is a good place to understand some of this configuration where you can see how different thing works and how exactly it configures typescript or what exactly tells typescript to do one of the examples i can show you in this
this video is that there is this property which is part of compiler options is called no implicit any now when you have this as false typescript is not going to complain when you have an implicit any let's see an example of an implicit any let's say we have a function called print and this takes a message and because i didn't type this parameter explicitly it's going to have an implicit any type if i should hover on it you can see parameter message implicitly has an any type but i could also call me explicitly and say this should be any. But now with this implicit any type, TypeScript is not going to throw an error for this. If I try to compile this from TypeScript to JavaScript, it will compile just fine. But then if I come to my TS config and I say no implicit any true, now TypeScript is going to throw an error. It's going to tell us that parameter message implicitly has an any type. So either I explicitly type this as any or I can explicitly type it to something else. But if I leave it like that, where it would have an any type, which is the default if you don't provide types, TypeScript is going to complain. So this is how this TS config allows you to configure TypeScript in different ways and it how TypeScript should behave with your project. Like I said, I'll cover that in a separate video and I'm going to link that in the video description. But I just wanted to give you an idea of why this file exists and what exactly it has to do with TypeScript. Since TypeScript is a superset of JavaScript, it means that whatever you can do in JavaScript, you can do in TypeScript because TypeScript is still going to compile back to JavaScript to be used in the browser or in other runtime environments. But whatever you can do in TypeScript, you cannot necessarily do in JavaScript. It's important to understand this difference because TypeScript is something that you use during development, but it is not something that you host or something that goes to production. What goes to production is instead the compiled version of your TypeScript code. And during that compilation, you are able to catch any type errors and also resolve those type errors. And once you have a successful compilation, it means you have some confidence in the applications that you build. Well, unless you use any in different parts of your application. I hope that this video helps you understand what TypeScript is and also helps you understand how useful it is and also helps you get started with writing simple and advanced types. TypeScript is a tool you will see used in different industries and different applications that we build in vanilla JavaScript application or even in applications built with frameworks like React, Angular, Vue, Astro, Next.js, name all of them. And all of this concept to have learned in this video can be applied to these frameworks, but some of these frameworks also have extra things that you can use TypeScript for. So I'm still going to be making videos where I show you how you can use TypeScript in all of these frameworks. And I'm also going to be working on an advanced TypeScript video where I show you how you can create even more complicated types with TypeScript. All of the information I've shared in this video can be found on simpletypescript.dev where I'm going to be making a course and also sharing different tips and also sharing different solutions to the problems you might encounter in TypeScript. I hope you enjoyed this. If you enjoyed it, please give this video a like if you haven't already. Subscribe if you haven't already and also watch out for more TypeScript videos that I'm going to be sharing on my channel.